five things that you need to do that you need to have in place if you want to have true career freedom. Pursue the things that you are truly interested in. It means that you can make all your career decisions authentically and not based on financial considerations. Today, I want to talk about career freedom and how to make it work financially. And for this, I will give you five tips. But first of all, let us just start off by talking about career freedom. What do I mean exactly when I say career freedom? It basically means the freedom to pursue the kind of career that you truly want. It means not being chained to a particular job or a company. It means not having to stay stuck working in a job or in a career that you dislike or that you even hate. It means having the freedom to at any time pursue the things that you are truly interested in and also have the freedom to take the time that is needed to develop a new career. But there is one very big obstacle for many people. There is one big reason why most people feel that they do not have career freedom, that they do not have the option to change careers and explore a different career. There are, there are actually many reasons, but I think that one of the main biggest reasons is the financial aspect. Many people are afraid to change careers because they are worried that they will not be able to cope and to deal with the financial consequences. Because if you change careers, usually that will mean that you will need to start at a lower salary. It's not always the case, but in most cases, especially if you make a drastic career change, let's say that pre previously you were working in banking and now you want to change to become a graphic designer, then usually at least in the first few months, you cannot immediately get to the same income level as you had previously when you were a banker. So that is something that usually keeps people from even thinking about uh, a career change. But don't worry because today in this podcast, I will talk about five ways, five things that you need to do that you need to have in place if you want to have true career freedom. And when we, as we go through this list, also do not be too worried if you feel that you cannot check off the box for each of these because even if there's just one or if there are two things of this list in place then you are already in a very very good position and you can afford yourself more career freedom so let's just dive right into it the first one is that in order to have career freedom you need to have fu money for two years so now you might be wondering why two years because many people would perhaps advise you to have six months of emergency savings or even a year but two years hmm that sounds like a lot so this is the reason i think that in order to make a full career change especially if it's a drastic career change you need a certain time for that Usually it's not something that happens within one or two months. Maybe it takes you six months, it can take you eight months, depending on whether or not you need to invest into new skills or you need to go back um, to school or maybe you need to do an internship first or perhaps you need to take a part-time job first in that new industry or or whatever. And, and that takes some time. It takes some time to get back to uh, your original income level that you had in your previous career so the problem is if you only have emergency savings for to cover one year of living expenses you could face this kind of situation you are developing your new career and you are just about to make it or you are starting your new business you, you you've decided to become self-employed and you've you're just about to arrive at that point where you're making it generating some profit or you got you're about to get a new job but you haven't really been accepted yet by any company and the problem is if you only have one year of emergency savings then you might get into a tricky situation where you need to go back to your old job and that's a situation that you completely want to avoid that is something that will really pull you down usually if you want to make a complete career 
transition, it will take longer than one year, all things considered. So if you have FU money for two years, it will put you more at ease because you know that you do not need to rush too much. You can take some time to develop your new career and you won't have any financial worries during that two years. The other thing that you need to have in place that you need to do to have freedom is to live more frugally. So this basically means that you need to try to cut your expenses. Look at your monthly, your yearly expenses now and whatever that is, try and cut that down by at least 20%. If you can do 50% even better, but even 10%, 20% is better than nothing. The benefit is that you won't feel pressured in the process of changing careers. You won't feel pressured to, um, to choose a job job based on financial considerations only. I mean, of course, in most cases, you will pick the job that pays you more, but there are also often cases where perhaps you prefer job A over job B, but but because job B pays more, in the end, you go for job B. And you want to avoid that kind of situation because what career freedom means that you make your career decisions, your career choices, not based purely on financial considerations. But if you have high living expenses, let's say that every month your living expenses are, let's just say $7,000, which is, yeah, I think that's that's quite high. If you maintain that level of living expenses, then it will in a way force you to look for a job that pays you at least that salary. If you get a job offer that is ideal for you and that is in line with your career plan and your career vision, but if it only pays you $5,000 or $4,000 per month, then you will turn it down. And that is the exact opposite of what career freedom means. So start living more frugally. Try to lower your living expenses because Uh, By doing that, you will allow yourself much more career freedom. Let's go on to number three. Number three is financial freedom. I'm sure that you've heard about financial freedom. It basically means that you have enough money to cover your living expenses for your entire life. And yeah, in theory, you would never need to work again. So if you're in that kind of position where you do not have to ever think about money again, that is where you have true career freedom. It means that you can make all your career decisions authentically and not based on financial considerations. But of course, achieving financial freedom is not something that is easily done. The approximate rule of financial freedom is that you've saved up approximately 25 times your annual living expenses. Let's just say that your annual living expenses are $50,000. So you take $50,000 times 25, so your financial freedom number would be $1.25 million. And that is a large sum. So for those of you who are already a bit older in your end 30s, 40s and 50s, perhaps this kind of goal could be could feel a bit daunting to you and you're not sure whether or not you could get there. But actually, there are many examples, many study cases of people who are already in their 40s and managed to achieve financial freedom in, in their 50s or so. But if you listening right now are someone who is in your 20s, then I would definitely try and go for financial freedom because time is on your side and you can really make use of the power of compounding. You have enough time to make your money work for you. By just saving up 30%, 50% of your income each year, you can quite easily achieve financial freedom in 10 years or even 15 years. Let's go on to the next one. The fourth way to make, uh, to, to have career freedom and to make it work financially is to have passive income or automated income. So that can mean, for example, that you have a property which you rent out and earn income from, or you have an online shop. So if you have passive or automated income, if you have this additional income stream, it gives you more career freedom because you can choose a job that perhaps pays less but that is more ideal for you because you know that you have this other income stream you do not need to fully rely on the income from this new career that is still very young and that you are still developing let's go on to number five this is something not financially related 
indirectly it is but it is more related to relationships and that is ideally you would have a spouse or a partner who has the same philosophy about having a career as you do because that would mean that your spouse or your partner would be supporting you in whatever you do in your career a problem that arises in some couples relationships is that if the two people have totally different career goals which is still okay but they do not support each other's career goals at all for example one person wants to spend more time with the family, more time with the kids, and perhaps wants to have a more low-key lifestyle, but more more time, more, more freedom. Whereas the other spouse perhaps is more into really hustling, working 50 hours per week in order to afford a more luxurious life. And that gives room for a lot of conflict because these two people would have such different philosophies about working, about how to spend their time, and so on. Another problem could also be if one spouse is, for example, very interested in pursuing an artistic career, and this is a career which usually has a lot of ups and downs, but the other spouse is not really on board. They would really rather have both of them working full-time, earning a full-time income instead of trying and experimenting, doing different things. So what does that mean? If you listening right now are someone who is single, who is in the process of looking for a partner, then this is the perfect chance to include this additional criteria of the perfect partner on your list, which is looking for a spouse who has more or less the same kind of career philosophy as you have. The same priorities when it comes to life, finances, and career. But if you are someone who is already in a serious relationship or you are already married, then it is not too late, don't worry, but it's a good chance to get together with your spouse, with your partner, and have a talk about your career. Have a talk about what your career vision is, what your career goals are. But first of all, you yourself need to know what that is. Only if you yourself are clear about it will you be able to communicate it to your partner. So in a re relationship, it's really important that, that you're transparent about what you want for your career, what you want for your finances, because both of those things will in the end affect the other areas of your life and your relationship. So going back to career freedom, if you want career freedom, you need to have a spouse, you need to have a partner who is on board with that. If you are someone who wants to uh, explore a new career or change a career, you need to have a spouse who is supportive of that and who is not just another obstacle in the way of you trying to do that. So those were my five tips on how you can have career freedom and also make it work financially. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast episode. And don't forget, it's never too late to change your career. It's never too late to make some small tweaks, some small changes that will make your career more fulfilling and more meaningful. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you again next time.